I'm sorry I have to do this because we are, we are shortage of uh, drive, um, speakers, not drivers. Um, it, it's not easy for, for the PMD ri riders uh, to organize something like this. Um, because they are the underprivileged people, they are socially disadvantaged people. They are afraid. They are very afraid of standing up for themselves, even when their rice bowl are, are being affected. That's why you don't see many people down here. But there are 7,000 of them out there. Most of most of, most of, most of them are busy doing their um, uh, deals, uh, delivering fruits to earn their money. So, nevertheless, um, we are here. And I try to urge um, LTA to actually work with them, or even me, to solve this problem. There are, there are a lot of uh, smart people. They are, they are not stupid people. They know the problems. They are every day on the road, every day on the path. They know exactly what, is, what are the problems. Even some of them actually wrote to me. This, I'm, going to, I'm going to read some of them right, on how they think it can be solved and why they need the PMDs. This is from a mother. Right? It says that the, the cost is cheaper than a car. That's what I say. All right? That's number one. Number two, compared to motorcycle, right? PMDs, some of the PMDs can actually carry two kids, but motorcycle can't. Right? And I, and I actually asked her, really, I can carry two kids? Can you show me? He, she really posted a, a picture to me. Some PMD can actually carry two kids, right? And public transport during peak hours, just not as a good option to co accommodate parents using strollers. That is a concern. These, these feedbacks are a consolidation from a group of mothers who are using PMDs to carry their babies or the kids around. These are real, real cases. I'm not a makeup one. Huh? You can see from my, my Facebook, huh? they, are, they are private message me. Right? And the queue to send to sending kids via road vehicles is too long. That means school bus. Or you go by, by car, it's very long the queue. Normally you go to school, you know it lines up the, the whole street are, are jam, right? And parents will not speed and endanger our kids. Life as well as other kids. So are they, are they the ones who are responsible for all the, the accident? Of course not. But why are they being penalized? That's what she is saying. No? And of course, they also know that they cannot switch to PAB. PAB is e-bikes, e electric, uh, electric bikes. Due to safety concerns, it's very, very dangerous. Very much dangerous than the PMDs. Right? And number seven putting many of us in debt because many of us took the installment plan and now it becomes a white elephant at home. Number eight, we agree that this PMB is the most cost-effective and convenient option in the long run compared to using other transportation devices. This is from a group of a few hundred mothers who are using PMDs. Right? For some of the location to school as long distance to walk, and we need to reach our workplace in the right time also. Also for, for workplace. And the, the number 10 is actually very touching. I am a father, although my, my kid, my daughter is already 16 years old. Right? She said, riding to go together with our kids, be it to school, run errands or recreational, has bonded us close together as a family with the kids. This, these are the intangible social benefits that nobody ever think of. That's why when I read this, it's very touching. Parents who, buy, who really bothers about bonding with their kids, and PMD is one way, riding with them. Right? And we educate our kids how to be aware of their surrounding and, our, and our other footpath users and be a better pedestrian when they are riding. Another good point. When you ride with your kids, you educate them right from young. Be considerate to other users. It is a shared space. 
among all of us. 5.7 million, right? We are going to 6.9. And later, 10 million people. These are the things that we need to cultivate from young. And not something that you can do by just banning anything that is inconvenient in the short run. Right? And for constructive thoughts, she wrote, extensive education outreach to stakeholders. Stakeholders means pedestrian as well. Please don't look at a smartphone when you, you walk. Right? You are going to, you are going <laughs> to crash into a PMD, a person, or a lamppost. Right? We are too used to our smartphone. Right? Can we riders exist to identify which footpath available? with at least two meters to be converted to share paths immediately. They are willing to work with the authorities, the LTA. A down-up effect, effort, to say that why not we work with the LTA and we try to identify within our precinct which are the paths is big enough actually to draw out a separate path of a PMD. I like this person because she's not making us against them. It is not about the PMD riders against LTA. It is not about the PMD riders against other Singaporeans who are against it. They want to work with the authorities. They are not confrontational. So am I. I may, I may speak very loud uh, during the lilac dialogue and um, shout a bit because I don't have a mic. But please don't mistake that I'm rude. Right? Because it's my passion to see that people see the point. That you are, this, you, are, you are actually affecting a lot of other people who are not guilty, innocent parties of their rice bowl, of their livelihood, just by one single word, ban immediate effect. That is not the right way of governance. And I always remember Lee Hsien Long actually copied a, a, a catchphrase from me during the 2006 election. I said, I shall not leave anyone behind. My speech was, leave no one behind. And apparently Lee Hsien Long actually agrees with it. In one of his uh, speeches, I think National Day speeches, he said, leave no one behind. No man behind. But now you are doing something which is leave 7,000 people's rice bowl. Break their rice bowl, you are leaving them behind. And it's ironic that he's saying that, oh, please trust us, PAP, we have not changed. No, Mr. Lee, you have changed. Your party until your, your father tries to solve problems unless there's no benefits from the issue. But not you. Your new generation of ministers, sorry to say that, cannot make it. Lah. Now, this, this, um, this feedback also start, started to say that all riders should go through a test Written test as well as practical test. That's what I think also. It's not a genius type of answers to come up with. I believe the top scholars in the, in the LTA can think about it. Why did not they implement it? Because there will be a lot of administration work. There will be a lot of trouble. There will be a lot of money have to spend in it. But I ask again the fundamental question. Do you believe PMD is good for our society or not? That is fundamental. If you believe it is good, just like when they built the first MRT uh, MRT's, uh, line, the North-South North -South line, whether it's $6 billion, $8 billion, okay, well, I say, yes, we are going to build it, although it costs a lot of money. But he believes that it's good for us as a nation in the long term. That is the way that you do a cost and benefit analysis and not taking an easier way out.
tahu. I am not mistaken. There's some PMDs people actually say Go Ming Singh is shit stirrer. I have no regrets to be a shit stirrer. But there must be a shit for me to stir. And who are the shit? <laughs> it's the wrong policies that are the shit. If I don't start it, nobody will buy about, give a thought about it. Every Singaporean will take a very simplistic view of the ban. Yeah, no good. Lah. Well, always ban into me, uh, this PME. Of course, ban. Lah. But they didn't think whether the government have a part in it. Is it because of the government in action of regulating and thinking of a formula, a strategy to deal with new technology that caused all the trouble. They, have, they never think about that. They just see people, ban in other people, oh, these people must be wrong. But they didn't know it's because of a lack of infrastructure. So we have to win this battle only by convincing the silent majority, so-called, the silent majority. I always tell the, the, the PMD riders, uh, the delivery riders, we can only win this battle. First, convince Singaporeans at large that this is not a simple issue that you can just ban away. There are benefits to the, our society. There are benefits for our underprivileged people to, to make a decent living with dignity and you know why I shouted that night? Talk about, talking about dignity. I went to Chi Hong Tat MPS. He was talking with a group of 30, 20 degree riders, grab riders mostly. And he said, oh, we, I, uh, we know your concern, I hear you. Oh, anyone uh, need any help uh, can come to me in the MPS. You know, as a person who have lived off the street, so I said, we have gone through the hardship. Never have I begged anyone for any dollar. Not from the government. And that is dignity. We may, we may play Tom and Jerry with the enforcement, uh, because Tao Tegu, right? But never have I, never have we as a family begged for anything. And now you are taking off the fishing rope from these people and ask them, oh, do, do you need fish from me? And that is what made me very angry that night. Extremely angry. It's an insult. They might be underprivileged, socially disadvantaged. But as far as me, I'm concerned, I see them work very hard. And they have the dignity to earn their own living. Instead of say, oh, Bo Pien, I cannot find a job. So I go to MPS every time, I take $50 from the MP, MP. No, they didn't. So why would you want to further demoralize these people? To insult them. To take away their dignity by asking such questions. And the most insulting part comes to NTUC. Oh, we can give $200 to those who are needy. No, we don't. I don't think you want, right? You want to earn your own living, right? It acts insult to the whole situation. So please don't do it. I beg NTUC, don't ever do it again. Not the MPs, not the ministers. You think that you are trying to help them. No, you are insulting them. And because people up there who have a good life, who have not tasted hunger, thought that $200 is a big thing. To these people, it's not about the money. Who wants to be a beggar if they can earn their own dough? 
even a one-legged person can do deliveries. But you are now making him losing 70% of the orders because he cannot make it. Even a one-legged man has such dignity. So I beg you, the only time I beg PAP is to listen. Don't be arrogant. It's okay to make mistakes. We make mistakes all our lives. But the most important thing is you must learn from your mistake, reflect about it, and make amends to the mistake. It's okay to do a U turn again, you know. What be chole, eh? I don't I won't laugh at you. Right? We won't laugh at you. But if we are doing a U turn to say that yes, we have made a mistake, we have to we have to we have not taken into much more consideration of other aspects and we are reviewing the system and trying to come up with a better regulation, better system, ecosystem, or even work with them, work with me. To come out with a win-win situation, fine, I give you a crap. Right, will you give, me, give them a crap if they do that? Be reasonable. And don't just brush aside everything to say, oh, Go Meng Seng is trying to politicize the thing, stoke emotions and all that. No. There is no political points to be made from this issue. I'm losing a lot of fans because of that. Because a lot, a lot of opposition supporters also support the ban. They cannot see the issue in clarity. But as I said, heck it, if I don't stand up for them, I lose my conscience. And that is what matters to me. Not the seat in parliament and do nothing. And become a what part-time MP, uh, taking $16,000. No, that's not what I want. So I believe some of you are here. Try to spread the message. Talk to people nicely. Convince them the issue is more than banning or not banning. Get their understanding, the sympathy, the empathy. And influence them. Change their mind. Look at things in a more holistic way. The better solution. There are better solutions out there. I'm not the smartest people in Singapore, definitely. In fact, some, one of the IT guys told me, you can actually control the speed of the, the PMD by using your handphone. How? This is for the long term. Huh? He said, you can set a device on a PMD, connect to your smartphone through Bluetooth. And when you use the, the PMD, if, if it's connected, then you can go according to the speed limit set. And with the app inside your, your smartphone, it can, can actually control the speed. If you are on this route, this pathway is supposed to be 5 kilometers per hour. You cannot go more than 5 kilometers per hour. The mapping, the zoning, it can be done. These are the creative, innovative solutions that people have provided me. I don't want to take any credit. I can tell you straight, these are from the normal people on the street. Right? And what happens if you don't connect to your smartphone, then your PMD can only go at the max 5 kilometers per hour. I think it's fair. If you connect to it, then when you are above 8 kilometers per hour, then you can go, but you cannot go faster than that. It's controlled by the apps. This is what we call the Internet of Things. PAP have talked big about AI and all that Internet of Things, but they do not really have any idea how to make use of it. But Singaporeans are very smart. Immediately, they come up with a solution to me. This is what we can do in the long run. 
If you regulate every importer, it's just like what we did with our cars. All the cars must have what? The ERP, the the EZ link card reader. You can do that for the uh, for the PMDs. Install a device that you connect to your hand, handphone, control the speed by the app. Then you have no issue of speeding at all. It is whether about PAP government willing to listen and to take feedback. Innovative, creative solutions are all out there. You just have to have the political will to say, yes, we are going to do it. And lift the ban. Because life are at stake, rice bowl are at stake. And that is politics. So don't blame me for politicizing it. Thank you. I think um, I think while we, we will have um, a feedback session. You have any question or anything you want to raise, you can um, come forward and raise it. But no speech, huh? you're not supposed to give speech. But you can raise questions. Right? I give back to the MC.